Hey folks, it's the Red, and welcome back to the Crash Bandicoot Wrath of Cortex No Damage Run. So here we are on the PlayStation 2 version of the game as we are about to head to level 4. But before we do that, I thought we'd take a moment to have a look at some of the differences on this version. Such as... A sparkly ring next to the save and load screen. I'm not sure why it's here, but it's just here going up and down making this sparkly particle effect. We don't see it on the Xbox or GameCube versions of this game, so... That's kind of interesting. It certainly looks pretty. Though I wonder why they took it out of later versions of the game. Maybe it, uh, was a little too resource intensive. I'm not sure. But anyway, distractions aside, let's move on to the next level. We were heading to level four, Wizards and Lizards. Here's the PlayStation 2's loading screen. Crash just falling through space and all of its colorful stars. <laughs> I like the uh, coloring effect on Crash. So here we are at the Wizards and Lizards level, which actually takes place on the remains of Cortex's castle, which I think is pretty interesting. Um, yeah. Lab assistants, you do know that y'all aren't employed here anymore, right? You don't have to stay. Wizards are making their return from Crash 3, and this time around the beam can actually follow you behind after you've already passed it up, so watch out that you're not getting shot at from behind. The wizards can be a little more uh, dangerous to contend with this time around for that reason. And these uh, shield-holding knights here are not wearing any pants, and that is the indicator that you have to slide into them to beat them. Also, you can rub your face all over them, and they can't hurt you. So they're not really a threat at all. I like the light effect of the window into the room, especially when it's going over the pit like this. Yeah, that looks pretty nice. I rather like it. Anyway, we don't have too far to go before we find ourselves going to the bonus room. So let's go ahead and take care of that. Now, this bonus room has a lot of box setups that you need to pay attention to. Like, you have to bounce on that one in order to get to this upper one that you would not be able to reach with a high jump. So make sure you're paying attention to things like that. Otherwise, you might miss your chance to get that precious box completion gem. This is going to be especially true moving forward. Also, pay attention to the music here. There's a little error here that gets fixed in later versions. You heard how there was a little pause in there? That's because the music has to reload itself after it reaches the loop. Oh! No, I wasn't supposed to break that box! That... Uh Hang on, hang on, hang on, I got, I got a trick here, I'm gonna try this. This will work. Okay, we're gonna do this. Yeah! Yeah, okay, that was the setup I was talking about. I, if this box wasn't here, if this bouncing crate wasn't here, I probably would not have been able to reach that one up. So, make sure you're paying attention to the boxes before you spin them, like I wasn't just then. Case in point, right here, you want to bounce on these question crates so that you can reach the one up up above. Again, a high jump will not get you up there. So, yeah, make sure you're paying attention to all the boxes before you go breaking them. Otherwise, that one could be a little bit of a problem. Still, it's nothing too bad. Anyway, we don't have too far to go into this level before... Oh god, we're being chased by a dragon! Yes, we got ourselves another chase level. There are barrels along the path that are going to uh, trip you up, or try to at least. So just do your best to move around those, as well as the holes, and you shouldn't have too much of an issue getting through there. While the dragon is stuck in the wall like this, he can still kill you, so don't touch him during that part. Yeah, the dragon is instant kill. The dragon can also be used to break the boxes that you miss along the way, so... Don't feel like you need to go out of your way to break each one. However, the dragon does not cover the entire screen, so you need to make sure you're facing... you have the dragon facing the right direction so that he can break all the boxes. He tends to follow directly behind wherever Crash is, so just lead him in the right direction and he'll do the rest. Now we're going to start getting some nitros into the mix, so make sure you're watching out for that. And... The steam will also tell you when you're coming up to a hole, although it can make it difficult to tell how far Crash is from the hole, so watch out for that as well. Anyway, we just take out this bridge, and now he can't follow us. Too bad, so sad for you. Anyway, now we're coming into a 2D section here. Nothing too terribly bad to look out for in this part. 
Although the background has some nice portraits of some of our past enemies from the other games, which I think is a nice touch. There's a lot of nice things I like about this level. These, these fireplaces here are also spewing out some uh, burning charcoal bits or whatever they're supposed to be. But you don't need to worry about them because they don't damage you even if they touch you, which is kind of weird. And we have a death route here, but we'll take care of that in a moment. Carefully take out these boxes so that you don't get hit by the nitro. Sometimes that nitro will just dive straight down, and if you're s still spinning when it does so, well, you're going to take a hit, so kind of have to hold my breath when I hit those. Here's how the crystals look in the PlayStation 2 version, by the way. Thanks to a little uh, glowy effect around them, they're a lot easier to notice in this version. So I appreciate that. Not even gonna bother with those bats up there, we're just gonna hit this nitro detonator and take out the wizards. Up ahead, we get to take our box completion gem, but we're not going to exit the level just yet because we still have the death route to contend to. So let's go take care of that real quick. On we go! Also, if you look carefully, there's like a little gladiator helmet on this death route. If you noticed back in Arctic Antics, it was wearing a scarf and a hat, so I like the little touches that they added to those. Anyway, to get past this one, you want to jump over the spell as you're going over the hole. But also make sure that you're uh, outrunning the spell because it's going to be turning around to try and hit you from behind. And as for these trap doors, you don't want to be standing on them because after about a second, they will fall and you will fall with them. There's a lot to watch out for in this level. And these spears here that are constantly coming up and down, those could be a bit of a problem as well. Case in point, you need to time your jump carefully here so that you're not getting hit by that. Now we have a spinning spike ball and blade. We're going to be seeing a lot more of these in a later level, so consider this your preview of them. And here we have the green gem. Two colored gems in the first warp room. How do you like that? Anyway, that's all there is to that. Anyway, we come back with our crystal and our gems. Victory high jump! So, yeah, wizards and lizards. That was a pretty decent level, I think. Um, we do have a good number of outtakes to share, so we'll go ahead and take care of those. And be sure to join us next time as we head to level 5, Compactor Reactor, via the GameCube version. Yeah, I wanted to give every version of the game a platforming level to be showcased in. So with that... Thank you very much for watching. I do have a few extra things I want to show from Wizards and Lizards before we get to the outtakes, but we'll take care of that right now, and I'll see you next time. Looking for a little extra challenge on your death route? Well, then don't bother breaking the Nitro Detonator at the end of the level. Instead, leave them on, and uh, then you can have a slightly more difficult platforming challenge on the death route. I mean, some of these are a little easy to get around like that one because it doesn't seem like they're really in the way to begin with. There's also the fact that you could slide some of these enemies into the nitro in order to detonate them that way. But other than that, yeah, they don't. I don't think this really adds too much, so we're not missing too much by leaving them intact. So here's a neat little trick that only works on the original North American PS2 version of the game. If you actually collect the clock, and then press the select button, it actually warps you to the end of the level. Where you can then just walk in and finish with six seconds or less, depending on uh, how quickly you decide to go straight to the end. And uh, yeah, that sets you up for an easy Platinum Relic. <laughs> I guess somebody forgot to take that out of, the f out of the final version of the game. So yeah, thanks for the easy uh, Platinum, I guess. It only works in this level, though, so don't think you can cheese all of time trials this way. <laughs> and yeah, the wizards are back in full force. The dragon can be used to break the boxes along the way, but that won't do any good if you fall in a hole. So here we are at the wizards and wiz... wiz bleh, bleh. That's a tongue twister. Wizards and lizards. Bleh, bleh. You know what? I'm not keeping that. Ugh. That was terrible. <laughs> but I guess that's neither here nor there, now is it? Well, that was dumb. Yeah, if you listen to the music... What the heck? 
I didn't expect that kind of death. Okay, wait for this, and let's go. Ooh, oh, that was pretty badly timed. Well, darn. Of course, some of these holes are... Oh, darn it, Nitro! However, he doesn't take up the... Oh, sure, just dive right in, why don't you? 